So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're joining us. And thank you for taking time out of your day for the Salesforce Admins webinar, Learn to Leverage the Power of Sockle. So I'm Mike Gerhold, Senior Director of Admin Evangelism here at Salesforce. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Gerhold. But really the star of today's show is Louise Lockey, Salesforce MVP, 11 times certified. And you can follow her on Twitter at Louise Lockey. She'll be our main speaker today. She has some amazing information to share with us about Sockle. But of course, before we get started, just to remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. So please make all your purchasing decisions based on current features and services. And of course, we want you to be social with us because we're going to be social with you. So you can follow us on Twitter at Salesforce Admins, no I, and connect with other amazing admins on Twitter as well using the hashtag AwesomeAdmin. If you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, you can find us. We are Salesforce Admins. And of course, your hub, your home place, the first thing I look at every single day, admin.salesforce.com for all of the events, blogs, podcasts, webinars, resources, everything you need to be an awesome admin. And just a reminder, in case you missed any part of that, or you really wanna go back and watch the intro of that previous slide, Everything in this webinar will be recorded and you can watch it later on YouTube. You can go to that page at bit.ly slash power of SOQL, S-O-Q-L, and those are all capitalized. And of course, if you have questions during the webinar, don't wait to the very end. You can start asking them now. If you're not already logged into the Trailblazer community, you can jump over to our Salesforce admins webinar group or go to bit.ly slash admin webinar group. And don't forget those capitals, capital A, capital W, capital G. Again, you don't have to wait to the very end to ask your questions because we will be pulling some of those questions for the live Q&A at the end of this webinar. And then of course, Luis will be jumping back in to grab any questions that we missed. So a brief overview of today's agenda. I'm gonna throw it to Luis, who's gonna take it away, Luis. Thanks, Mike. Hello, everyone. So yes, this is today's agenda. We're going to start with talking about what is SOQL. Then I'll talk you through how to write a SOQL query. And then I'm going to have a live demonstration of writing a SOQL query to show you everything that we've talked about thus far. Um, and then we'll leave you with some resources so that you can carry on your learning journey. And of course, as Mike mentioned, we'll be carrying out a live Q&A. So question number one is indeed, what is SOQL? And the answer to that is that SOQL stands for Salesforce Object Query Language. So very simply, the language we use to query our Salesforce objects, our Salesforce data. Now, you may have heard of it before, um, and you may have heard of it in relation to Salesforce development. Your developer colleagues or, or peers may have, have referenced it. And so the question you might have now is, well, how is it relevant to admins? Why are we hearing about it on a Salesforce admin um, webinar? Well, these are the reasons why I think it is relevant and useful to fellow Salesforce admins. Number one for me is that it provides a quick and easy way of analysing my Salesforce data. I am a huge fan of the reports and dashboards that we use and have access to in the, in the Salesforce UI. However, sometimes I feel the need to quickly get some stats out of my data. And I personally, through, through using SOQL for a little while now, find that it is quicker and easier to do that. One of the reasons for that um, is that sometimes the request might come in. Someone might be um, asking just before a busy meeting um, for some key stats on your Salesforce org, on your data. Um, and you start to, to write a report in Salesforce, but you might not necessarily know the whole requirement up front. And it might be, not be the situation where you can ask that. Um, and so the limitations you might have in 
the reporting functionality whereby you need to know whether which type report type to use and whether you need to in fact build a new custom report type um, writing a report in Sockwall you don't need to think about that up front you can build it as you go um, and that's something we'll be touching on today secondly is that um, we can use Sockwall in tools that we may use every day like Data Loader or Data Loader IO to extend their use from what we're currently doing. So, for example, if we were to um, be looking at pulling data from different sources, we could do that by applying Sockwall and I'll touch on that, that briefly in a moment. Um, my third reason is that though um, I don't believe that every admin should want to move on and become a programmer by 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 no means that that isn't something I see in my future and I know lots of us will be feeling the same to know a bit of Sockwall can help with um, reading the apex classes and code in your org so for example if you're trying to troubleshoot something um, some of what you're trying to troubleshoot chances are it will be Sockwall and so a bit of understanding of how Sockwall queries are compiled can help you with that the next reason is that um, if you're moving up in your career from maybe from being a, um, a junior um, a, a new Salesforce admin um, onto an immediate and then maybe an advanced admin and going for that next role or going for that next promotion at work having something like Sockwall skills can make you stand up from the crowd and make you that much more eligible for that new role um, and my last reason on this slide is is that we in the Salesforce ecosystem don't need an excuse to learn something new it's what we do we enjoy doing it um, and so this this is something that I recommend we all we all learn a bit about but I do actually have a another reason and that is because um, I feel that lo most of us know more about Sockwall than we realize. We may well have reused the Sockwall logic or, the, or seen Sockwall um, in our day-to-day -day jobs, but without realizing that that is exactly what we're interacting with. So I mentioned Data Loader um, before, um, and you'll see here from picking the fields on, on the query boxes and then adding your conditions, you are actually creating Sockwall. So we haven't actually written that, but we have created a Sockwall query in order to decide what data we're pulling down. And my example before of extending exist, the use of existing tools is, is in relation to Data Loader and Data Loader IO, because um, an example I've seen is where we might want to um, bring down all of our contacts data and then some data relating to those contacts from the account object. Um, and doing that in Data Loader at the moment, we are probably bringing down two sets of quit data and then matching them on, on the account ID. But using a little bit of Sockwall, we can actually bring down all of that data in one go. And that's just one example of where we might have seen it before and interacted with it before. Secondly, the report builder. So this is where the logic comes in. So the logic that we're using when we write reports, adding our filters, using and, using or, using greater than, you will see as we go on with today's session that that will all look very familiar and, and the same logic applies. Okay, so the next question is, where can we use Sockwall? So I've got two examples here. So one is Data Loader, as I as I mentioned. Um, so we we're we're now hopefully aware that we can use that there. Um, and the other is what we're going to be using today in in this webinar, and that's Developer Console. So let's look at where we can open up Developer Console. And that is really simply and easily in your Salesforce org. So you log into your Salesforce org and under the setup menu, you can open developer console as you see on the screen there. So that means you can open up a developer console window in any org that you have login details to. So um, the example we're going to look at today is actually in a developer org. You can, of course, use it in your production org, but also in sandboxes. 
Um, so anywhere where you can see the developer console um, option there, it'll open up. Now to use developer console, you, you do need permissions. Um, the main permission you need, need are API enabled and view all data. So um, as we're, we're on a Salesforce admin um, webinar here, hopefully lots of us have got admin access. Um, and so of course that will have that and mean that we can use developer console. Um, if you don't in your production org or your sandboxes, then of course you can use a um, developer edition um, to, to do that. Okay, so that's where we write our query. So how do we write a SOC call query? So let's start with a very basic query. All we need is a select and a from. So you'll see here we select which fields we want to have in our results and we cite what object those fields come from. So here is my example. We say select name, comma, ID from play. Now let's highlight a few things on this line. Um, first of all, you will see from the underscore underscore C that play is a custom object. Um, and this shows us that we need to always use the API name of our field and our objects in our SOC call queries. So that's rule number one to, to bear in mind. Now this query here, um, I have put all on one line with no, no particular spacing or line breaks um, because simply because it fit. Now take from that that it, the spaces don't matter. So if you think about how you would write a formula at the moment, it doesn't matter if you add in extra spaces or extra line breaks and SOC call queries are the same. You'll also notice something else that might seem familiar from, um, uh, from a formula and that is that we have select name, comma, ID and there's no comma after the ID. And that is because though we need to put commas to separate out the fields, um, just like in a formula or how we'd separate out the clauses, we don't need to put one on the final item. So this is my query and I'll just give you a tiny bit of background first of all of what data we're going to be looking at today. Um, so I, like all good admins, have a developer org that I use in my day to day life because when I want to practice Salesforce or explore areas that I might not be using in my day-to-day -day job, um, such as moving to Lightning, um, when my employer wasn't using Lightning, I run up a developer org and made it in Lightning and built out a use case from my life to practice those Lightning skills. Um, so my example is that here in London, I like to, to go to the theatre when, when I can. Um, however, I also have been doing that for so many years now that I lose track of whom and what I've seen when. And so I found that as a perfect use case for a Salesforce org. And so those are the examples we're going to be looking at today. So I have a Salesforce org that lists all of the plays I've seen. So if I want to um, recall the last time I saw Hamlet, um, I, can, I can access my org and find that data out. So just that it's a bit of background there for you. Okay, so our straightforward query of select name, comma, ID, and play is simply going to return a list of um, the names and IDs from the play object in my org. So let's look at that, what that might look like. So here it is in developer console. You can see I've added in that same query, select name, comma ID from play. And above it here, we have the results. So we have 507 lines, 507 plays. So then that, let's, let's um, edit that query. 
we are going to filter it by where because we, we want to drill down and not just look at the 507. So here is the next version of my query. You've seen I've added line breaks now just for, for, um, for it to read easier uh, and to see how we're building it out. So here we have select name comma ID from play um, as before, but now we've got a where. So we've added in where, date, again, which is a custom field. So we have underscore underscore C equals last year. Some, something else to note there, that last year um, is probably familiar to us all. That's something that we can add into our to our reports um, and it's a dynamic field. So this isn't the only one that works here. We could have today, we could have yesterday, this calendar year, this calendar month, this calendar quarter, all of those dynamic date ranges that you know and use in the rest of your org, you can use in SOCOR as well. So um, there is a list in the resources of the, at the end of this deck that will list them all out for you, but you probably know and use a lot of them already. Okay, so we've filtered by where, but what do we want to do next? We might want to add in an and. So here we're building out the query further. So we've got select name comma ID from play, where date equals last year, and rating, another custom field, is greater than four. So here I've used the greater than symbol, the greater than operator, just like I did the equals. Again, if you're not 100% sure of all of those, then they are in the resources um, and are easily accessible. So we have rating greater than four. So essentially, going back to, to the nature of this data, I am looking for all plays that I attended last year that had a rating of five stars. So I've been quite quite selective there, but I might want to broaden that slightly with an or. So here we see the same query, select name comma ID from play where date equals last year and the rating is greater than four or the cost is less than 20 pounds. So I, I'm confident that this looks familiar as well because what we're doing here is we're adding the kind of filter logic that we would add to our to our reports, to the filters, but also to the list views. So we've all done this before where we've said um, we want filter logic of one, two, three, or four or five. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So we're saying where the date is last year and either it was a five star play or it costs less than 20 pounds. So I'm filtering down for the cheapest or the best. Okay. So this is when we go to a demo. Okay, so here I am in data in a developer console. And you can see this is what it looks like on screen. And we are going to write our query in this box here in the query editor box. So our first query and forgive me if I if I make any typos, we are going to say select name comma ID from play underscore underscore C. Okay, so that's just what we had in our first example. I'm going to hit execute. And as in the screenshot, there's 507 results. So you can see that data has, has appeared here. Now I've asked for just name and ID, and so that's what I have here. You can see the list keeps going down. Um, and you'll see that we have a few items that we can use here. So we can actually insert a row here and add Salesforce data into our org from this screen. Equally, 
we can delete a row. But over to the right is probably the more useful um, items. We can from here open any one of these records in its detail page and it will just open you a new window in your Salesforce org as if you've navigated to that record from within Salesforce. And then you can also instead click the edit page, which will simply open that page, but in edit mode. By clicking create new, we're on the play object. It's just going to open up a create new play screen. So this shows how connected it is to your Salesforce org. OK, so that was our first query. So then let's add in our where clause. So I'm simply going to type in where date underscore under oops there we go underscore underscore oh apologies there we go underscore underscore c equals last underscore yeah I'm having all the typos on this one that should do it that has done it. So there we go. We have dropped from 507 results to five results. So let's then add in. We're going to have our and rating underscore underscore C is greater than four. Whoops. Let's try that. OK, that's dropped us down to three. That's working as expected. So then let's add in our or. I'm going to say or cost. Is greater than, oops, sorry, less than 20. So this is where we need to put in our parentheses, just what like we would in um, in our filter logic. And let's press the execute button. And that's taken us up to four. So we've grown from three to four here. So let's check this data. So I'm going to now on my select line, simply add a comma. And then I'm going to add in the rating field. and the cost field. OK, so I've added my comma there, all there. Let's press execute. We've added in those two new fields. So we can check that this data is as expected. So here we are. The first one has only a four star rating. So that's why it did, we dropped to three at one point, but it did only cost 12 pounds. So that's right. It is a criteria in there. So then the last thing we can do is I'm just going to wipe out this criteria here. So I'm just showing all from last year. And that's added a sixth play, oh, sorry, a fifth play. And that didn't meet either of the criteria because it cost more than £20 and had a rating of less than three. So that's a quick analysis into the data of the plays that I went to see last year. Um, and you can see by typing it in, I can edit and change it as I go. A couple of other things to point out to you. Um, if I'd actually run it with um, uh, one of the typos there where I spelt date wrong, um, it would have produced a query here. So I would have been able to see what I was doing wrong. So that's a useful box to know about. The other thing is on the right, um, it will save the, your last 10 queries. So you can jump in and out of these here or also along the top. So each time I've run, run a new query, it has saved it. And so they all appear there. So you can jump back to the last one instead of typing it out again, which is really quite handy. And that's the end of the demo. OK, so we talked about a few of the different operators today, um, but these are some more that I think are, are particularly useful. So I limited 
um, by filtering my results on the rating and on the cost. But you can actually just say, I don't want to see all 507 plays, I want to see 10. And you can add in the limit field by simply adding limit 10, as you can see in the example on the right. However, that might not be the most useful thing to do on its own. So by adding in the order by field, um, sorry, the order by filter, you can say order by name ascending and get your top 10 alphabetically or by annual revenue or anything else like that. So that's a useful one to add in, um, particularly in combination with each other. Um, next, we, we um, have the in. So we could say we want all of our accounts, as in this second example, um, that have they're doing the billing states of Georgia, Florida or North Carolina. Um, and we could, of course, say where billing state equals GA or where billing state equals Florida. But instead, if we use the in and we can search for multiple values in, in pick lists or in text fields there, just with the quote marks around the, the values. We saw the equals, but then we have under that on the left, the not equal sign, which is equally um useful to have and then we have the like and the percentage sign so our third example on the right um, we've said um, select id name and email from contact where first name is like lewis and then the um the percentage sign so what this will give us will all louises all louises and all louis so if i put one at the beginning before the l then i might get eloises as well so that's quite useful if you don't know exactly what the, that the data is you're looking for. Sum, min, max and average that you will have used before, you can use again in SOCOR here. And we mentioned the date ranges of um, last year, but you can see, as I mentioned today, last month, all of those that you're used to um, are available. Count will very simply give you um, a count from an object. But count distinct is, is quite useful. In my fourth example on the right, I say select count distinct name from account. So you're going to get a count of the unique account names. But also another use case for that might be unique emails. So select count distinct email from contact, for example. Then the tips and tricks to remember. In the very basic form, every query starts with a select and has a from. As long as you've got those two in there, then, then you've got a good place to start. Do remember it's the API names for objects and fields, so you may need to look some of those up if they're not straightforward, but um, I'm sure that looks fine. Um, apply single quotes like this when you're looking for text values or pick this results, as I just showed you in the Georgia, Florida, North Carolina example. Um, and that used an in, but equally you can have a not in, but for multi-select pick list you do need includes or excludes. Something that catches a lot of us out is that wildcard in SOCWAL is the percentage sign and not the asterisk like as it is elsewhere in the org. Um, and one thing for those that might have used SQL in the past, a different language, um, you can't just select all fields from an object with the asterisks. You do need to list them out as we showed. Then on to the resources. There are some great blog posts out there that um, I certainly read a lot while I was learning this and I recommend that you go on to do so. So Women Code Heroes is a blog by Kieran Jameson who works at Salesforce um, and is a, is a founder of Rad Women. Um, the developer documentation itself has some good um, lists but Salesforce Ben has a cheat sheet and that's where he lists lots of the um, operators and um, the, say the dynamic date ranges that you might want to apply. And then David Liu um, has an intro to SOCQL and why you should learn it on SF99, which I recommend as well. Um, and then on the right, there are a few um, trailhead modules that um, recommend uh, that, that reference SOCQL that will be good ones to look at. And I do believe that there is a, another one dedicated to SOCQL 
in the works. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that and I'll certainly tweet about it when I see it. Oh, it was very informative, Louise. Thank you. And I appreciate that demo. It was great. So as we wrap up, uh, just to let everybody know, the Q&A, which looks like there's some very great questions in the uh, Salesforce admins webinar group. If you're not already logged into the Trailblazer community, it's bit.ly slash admin webinar group. And just a reminder, there will be a survey right after this webinar. So please go ahead and take that. And of course, slides, which I saw was a question in the webinar group bit.ly slash power of Sockel, capital S-O-Q-L. I know we're right at time, uh, but Luis, I did want to ask you one question, which was, uh, and it came up in the group, does the developer console, console only allow to query custom objects? Oh, yes. No, not at all. It um, allows you to query all data that you have access to. So you can query your standard objects as well as your custom objects. Absolutely. Fantastic. I know we're right at time, so we're going to jump into the admin webinar group and answer some questions uh, that I know you've had asked. And I appreciate everybody taking time out of their day today to join us for the Salesforce admins webinar. Have a great Wednesday. Thank you.